struck, Kikuhime. Why, I do believe I've ruptured an organ. <sighs> Mon ami, it's a pleasure to see you again. No need to worry. This injury is but a part of Kikuhime's training. An irreplaceable asset indeed. Anything I may receive from my little darlings, be it an injury or otherwise, is something to be proud of. She's saying, nice to meet you. I am Kikuhime. You honor me with your presence. And such. Kikuhime is one of my more well-mannered, refined little darlings. Isn't she affable? She's a bit of a worrier, yet ever so gracious. She's always kind enough to massage my aches when I'm fatigued. Would you, Kikuhime? Ow! 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 I... I think you worked the knot out! Ow! 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 Her famous gut punch massage gets it done. The cold sweat never stops, and it's heaven. Ah, her love always hits like a brick. What do you think, Monami? Isn't my little darling the sweetest? And I love my darling Kikuhime right back. You can see how much I mean to her by the way she acts, can't you? Just feeling the overwhelming love flow from her constant attacks. Why, it nearly brings me to tears of joy! Her technique and poise while stringing together blow after blow. It's so elegant. So many feek. Truly a work of art. <laughs> Ever the demure maiden, my Kikuhime. Of course she's embarrassed by such lavish praise. You humble thing, you! Ah, yes, mon ami! Allow me to show you Kikuhime's resplendent, spectacular combos next! Ah! Wait, I didn't mean to... No! Ah, ah, take it easy! Ah, ah, ah. You're just brimming with motivation today, Kikuhime. But please, wait a minute. Mighty shadow, darker than the blackest night, bestow upon me the power to devour my enemies and become phantom. At the cusp of twilight, vanish into darkness amidst the moonlit gloom. Before your attack? Wouldn't that give the enemy plenty of time to escape? I mean, is that really necessary? Of course it's necessary. Enemies who hearken to my words will be petrified with fear, draining them of their resolve to flee in the face of certain death. This umbral incantation is needed to stop the enemy cold in its tracks. Oh no! Are you sure you're not just chanting because it sounds cool? Ugh, Patty! Don't just come out 
even say it! Don't be absurd. The chant is essential for victory. At least speaking for myself, it is. Hmm, I think I get it. If you want to be a master phantom, you've got to go full edgelord and embrace the darkness. I don't have a clue what it means, but that little speech you gave sure sounded cool. Teach me the way of the phantom. What are you doing, stupid? You've already made Kyokuya mad enough as it is. Very well. Really? The Phantom class depends not upon ridiculous concepts such as justice in battle. Think only of defeating your enemy. Disregard justice. Look away from the light and never fear the power of darkness. In your case, Guardian, I can only imagine what an Arxop as powerful as you could do as a Phantom. If that justice-obsessed simpleton sees something in you, then even she may have some redeeming qualities after all. Hmm. <laughs> Perhaps I've said a bit too much. Farewell. That guy's so friggin' cool! I wanna do that awesome chant too! Oh, mighty phantom, sure read it in darkness! Shredded? I think shrouded is the word you're looking for if you're trying to sound like him. Whatever. What kind of scoop did you get on the new Phantom class and its advocate, Patty? Tormented warriors, wreathed in blackest mystique. Words as sharp as any blade, their sanguine judgment falls heavy and swift. Behold the eleventh class phantom! And we've lost her. Just plain horrible! I refuse to accept this! Would you stop whining? Ah, it's you! Uh, don't mind Katori here. I've gotta know! Why is the Phantom class so popular despite not having a lick of advertising? Oh, do you think they were forced into Phantomhood through Code Abyss? Please ignore Katori and her delusions. Now you're calling me delusional? It is a bit puzzling how a class could gain so much recognition without any advertising. Saga and I put our hearts and souls into promoting our class to get bouncers on the map! So it doesn't seem fair to me! What do you think happened? Seriously? It's kinda cool? That's it? Something is not right here! Do you realize what Stratos did to popularize the hero class? So much! Advertising. Pathetic. Ah! How long have you been behind me? Anyone convinced to be a phantom through advertising will eventually face regret and ruin. How did you fly under my radar from such a short distance? That takes remarkable skill. Are you the Phantom Advocate? The one they call Kyokuya? It is you, isn't it? What do you have up your sleeve? I mean, zero advertising? Come on! Wait! Did you use some sort of, like, reverse psychology? Advertising by not advertising! Is that a thing? Don't be absurd. There's nothing absurd about it! Getting your class recognized is a big deal! Stratos put a huge amount of effort into promoting the hero class, and it's paid off! That is precisely what I'm calling absurd. How dare you insult Stratos like that! She poured her heart and soul into that class! Well, pardon, Katori. She's not exactly one to keep a cool head. Still, would you humor me and answer one question? 
You said something about facing regret and ruin. What did you mean by that? Exactly what I said. Walking the path of the Phantom is a grave undertaking. One who is not ready to abandon justice. Who becomes a Phantom as a result of advertising. Will die full of regret and despair. Only those who realize that even justice has its limits will naturally be called to the way of the Phantom. Only the latter deserves to be a Phantom. That's all there is to it. So, you accept only those who have fully prepared themselves in body and spirit, the opposite of a hero who embraces growth. The meaning of life is different to a hero. The Phantom exists solely to achieve what is unachievable through justice. The indecisive are nothing but a hindrance. If you want them, I cede them all to you. Farewell. Uh, of all the arrogant, sour-faced blowhards I've met, he really takes the cake. His resolve is commendable, but overconfidence can be dangerous. You'd best be careful. <gasps> hey, is that the big shot secret to success? Being an arrogant jerk? Right, it's time for a tactical shift. I'll be the biggest jerk in the fleet if it means getting new recruits. You seem to be laboring under a key misconception here. problem being called a coward. If that's what it takes to win, no method is too underhanded. You've gone too far! Don't you care about my feelings? <sighs> You're such an idiot, Kyoki. Wait. Why is everyone staring daggers at me? I sense great hostility. Because you're the bad guy here, Kyoki. Right? I guess you're right. It's a bad look to cause a scene like this in front of everyone. My apologies. Well, let me explain what happened. We were in Amduskia to suppress Draconians in the corrupted region. The tainted Fallspawn were extremely tough, but I wanted to take them on in a fair fight, in the name of justice. Pathetic. And how'd that work out for you? Our operatives suffered heavy casualties, and because I was so fixated on my front, they got hurt shielding me from a sneak attack. I was distracted and let my guard down, but suddenly, the tainted false bond started dropping one after another. It was Kiyoki and his phantom, sapping at work, even though I asked him not to do it. So what? You were ordered to suppress the Draconians. Slaughter is not how you keep justice. Your insistence on righteousness and proper methodology is what led you to sustaining casualties. Is that what a hero does? Well, no, but... A hero virtuously protects others, fighting to the very end. No, that's your conviction. But conviction dulls the mind. Now that you've faced a situation where justice failed to protect those you value, do you still subscribe to it? Justice has clouded your judgment. Use your own eyes to determine what is right. That is what will keep your mind sharp. I... don't want to see you get hurt again. I'm 
fine now, Kyoki. I'm a different person than I was back then. When my kind of justice can't solve the problem, your version of it can help. I see that now. <sighs> Anyways, my apologies for all that drama. Uh, I, I'd better be off now. Efficiency shows improvement, but now other problems are cropping up left and right. Too much stress on the frame, and the cockpit's life support function could stand to be tuned up. Hm? Oh, hello! How's it going? Oh, this tablet? It's a simulator for AIS development. I use it to simulate AIS that I've modified based on data received from ARC's ops. Then, I incorporate the results into my design to streamline the body, modifying AIS to meet everyone's needs. Oh, if you've got something to add, please don't hesitate to chime in. You still want more? I guess there's no limits where you're concerned, huh? I'm just doing my job, after all. I love my research, so I'll do whatever it takes to push it along. And with that, good luck out there. I'll be counting on you. Hey, mate. I feel like it's been a while since the two of us shot the breeze. I heard the announcement about what happened. There's hope on the horizon. But we've got to stay focused, huh? I probably already said this, but UC and I are general affairs. So we're up to our necks with work and deployment orders. But I reckon we've still got it a lot easier than you do as a guardian, mate. If there's anything I can do, no matter how trivial you might think it is, just let me know. Happy to pitch in whenever, mate. It's a relief to hear that from you. But if I'm being honest, I'm not without an ulterior motive here, mate. I'd like to see to it that UC and Aurora can live freely someday. I mean, walking through life with your own personal rain cloud, agonizing over once being Dark Falls, must really be tough. That's why I promised myself I'd do something for him. Seems like you already sussed that out, though. Second on my list is offering my services to you, however they might be needed. Oh, crap! Just remembered I've got a meet-up with UC. Gotta go. Sorry to chat and run, mate. Better be off now. Knock him dead out there. Let's play! Come on! Come on! You've got time! You've got time! You brats are really pissing me off. I ain't got time to horse around with you. <laughs> Why not? Why not play if you've got the time? Huh? Why not? What will it take to get you to play? Shut it, you damn rugrats. You're crazy if you think I'll ever forget about the messes you two have made. If it hadn't been for you, Sina never would have died. I'm sorry. Ugh. Lose the damn puppy dog eyes. We got no time to throw a pity party here. I get it. You guys aren't the same as Gemini the Duplicate. That said, you still look exactly like him. The mere sight of you almost sends me spiraling. Get it? Now leave me alone. Oh, 
Aw, come on! Play together! <sighs> you little! We don't want you to forget. We don't want you to forgive. We don't like it when you get mad, but it's understandable. We don't like it when you get violent, but it's understandable. Even so, I still want to play with you. I still want to play with you too. When we came here, we decided we would be true to our feelings. That's because we felt it would be silly to keep uh, lying. We're gonna do what we want. We're going to do what we want! So, let's play! Unbelievable. Why do I always have to be surrounded by such selfish children? Enhancement. No one was at the General Affairs Bureau, so I came to talk with you directly. Right, right. It's been utter chaos since Shiva showed up. I'll try to help if I can. Right. So, here's an estimate for the parts and specs needed for AIS enhancements, along with the blueprints for exclusive facilities. Okay. I'll take a look for you. Let's see... 180 types of armor enhancement parts, cockpit manipulator expansions, new booster specs, additional cost for frame drive optimization, enhancement and storage facility plans, and how much floor space? Vanilla, this is a tall order. Thanks for taking care of it. Whoa, hold on a second. I can't get this done right away. We don't have enough engineers! If I can just get your approval, I can do the rest on my end. That's not the issue. Getting authorization so quickly for this means more chaos. We don't even have the space for these facilities. The photoners won't wait around. This is for the safety of ARCs, so I know you can do it. Hold on. I think she's being unreasonable about this. Isn't she? Am I crazy? Is that all I get? This is about the AIS, you know. You'll be riding in them. Ugh. The intelligence and research bureaus are always asking me to bend over backwards, too. Fine. I got this. Somebody's gotta do it, right? power of darkness residing within me. The time is now. Hearken to our eternal covenant. Hey, it worked? Oh, it's you. Please don't give me that look. The new Phantom class was just made official, right? So I can only assume the Advocate will come and badger me into selling it for him. What do you mean I could just say no? I'd feel bad doing that, considering how much effort they put into making these classes. So I'm practicing for when the time comes, and he needs me to do PR for him. I helped out with Stratos, didn't I? Uh -uh. Heed my summons, oh mighty phantom advocate! Whoa! I actually summoned him? 
Somebody called for me. For the Phantom. Was it you? You again? Waiting for the Phantom, are you? Perhaps you're fascinated with... death. Yeah, I don't think that's it at all. What sort of advertising does a Phantom need? Lay it on me, baby! I've been practicing some potential lines. What are you talking about? Who asked you to promote me? Huh? Well, I mean... I heard someone calling out, so I heeded the summons. You're telling me it was just some juvenile prank. <sighs> Hold on now! Aren't you gonna advertise the new class? Don't you want people to learn the ways of the Phantom? If you're that obsessed with promoting me, feel free to do so. On your own. No, no! I'm not! It's just that Katori and Stratos were desperately trying to recruit for their new class, so I figured... A Phantom has no need for that. We reside... in darkness. Those who bask in the sun and only see light could never hope to understand. A word of advice for you. Renounce the way of the Phantom while you still can. Only oblivion awaits those who peer into the abyss. One last thing. That chant of yours was not half bad. A little training will go a long way. Farewell. I don't know what to say, boss. You still keep some strange company. If he's not even promoting his class, I've been standing in front of all these shoppers chanting my butt off for nothing! Ah, I'll never live this down! Did you hear about the newly established Phantom class? Rumors are going around that it's the Shadow of Arcs, among other strange stuff. I'm sure it's unrelated to Void, but it still has me pretty concerned. The upper ranks that approved it think it holds an important place in the Arcs community. <sighs> but Arcs is better off without a class that dabbles in shady practices. Anyone who's okay working under a questionable moral code is a bad apple in my book. That path only leads to sorrow. Maybe it's faster if I tell him directly. Hmm. I'm impressed you could sense me here. Um, so... Out of curiosity, did you come to hear my songs, Kyokuya? As the Phantom Advocate? Yeah. <sighs> Don't be absurd. Then let me ask this again. Why do you choose to live the way of the shadow? It only leads to sorrow. Now that we have the hero class representing light, the natural order dictates that it cast a shadow. The light is too bright for me, which is why I've chosen the way of the shadow, where I can shape my destiny with my own hands. So, you think being a shadow to balance out the light will bring you happiness? Hmm. Still. If the shadow's power is found wanting, the shadow itself shall be consumed. Life and all. Well said. Your position in the Intelligence Bureau is based on merit after all. Yet I wonder if one who fits between light and dark can triumph over the sheer density of my shadow. It's undeniable that you put a great deal of effort into obtaining that power. <laughs> effort? Don't make me laugh. I was born with the talent to walk the Shadow's path. Effort has nothing to do with it. Did you never consider walking another path? 
Choosing to live as the shadow means inevitably hurting those you hold dear. It strips you of the ability to love and be loved in return. Do you fully understand this? <laughs> You're quite humorous. Listen well. Shadow appears in the absence of light. The two can never coexist. The one who knows only of light moves toward the shadow. The one who insidiously knows their despair shall take root. You asked how prepared I am to walk the path I've chosen, but you fail to realize that I have already walked it to the bitter end. Thus, it is not in the nature of a shadow to love or be loved. Then, the sadness and despair you hold inside is the basis of the shadow. If anyone is clinging to sadness, it is you. I cannot begin to fathom the depth of your sorrow. The shadow does not suit you. Compassion, kindness, and the ability to smile are traits unique to the powerful light. <laughs> Perhaps I've said too much. Farewell. Doesn't he know I'm the zero of six? How dare he show such disrespect? But I see right through him. He's keeping his distance from others so as not to hurt someone important to him. And although he denies it, I'm fairly sure he is a man of tremendous diligence. I sense there's something he's very passionate about achieving. I say he's worthy of our trust. Listen carefully. Someone will soon approach you to ask, Have you seen the Black Wolf? And you must reply, Neither hide nor hair. Farewell. Hey! Come back! Oh, hello. Have you seen Kyoki? I'm humbled you'd tell me. I thought Kyoki would have forced you to stay silent. So you must still be in the area. Hmm. Let's see. Come on, Kyoki. Stop playing around and show yourself. I'm not gonna shut up until you come out. <sighs> There's no point in disappearing. I can read you and your whole magician act like a book. So, educate me. When it comes to fighting, where do you think the hero's skill set is lacking most? I'm not falling for that. Figure it out yourself. I haven't slept for three days thinking about this. But I keep coming up short. So, I'm asking for your help. A shadow cannot illuminate the light. I have nothing to teach you. That's not true! You taught me a ton of academic stuff when we were little. I remember all the examples you used to make things easier for me. You're an excellent teacher. Luko said so too. Luko? Who the devil is that? Huh? I can't believe you said that! If Luko heard you, she'd be furious! I've wiped all memory of the dead from my mind. And so should you. Sh she's not even dead! She's out there alive! Somewhere! Then bring her before me at once. I'll kill her right here and now. How could you say something so horrible? The three of us promised to all pitch in and overcome any obstacle that stood before us. Remember? Irrelevant. I'll never forget what that traitor did to us. Never! I sincerely apologize for involving you in this. 
It's something that happened a long time ago between us. The three of us were inseparable growing up. We learned together, laughed together, and developed an amazing bond. Luko eventually joined Arx to work as a kind and hospitable maid. I was so proud of her. But five years ago now, something happened. One day, Luko sent a letter to me in Kyoki, inviting us to a beautiful old mansion just outside the city. She didn't give a reason, which I found a little strange, but we went to the mansion the next day anyway. No one was there to greet us, though. We ended up never hearing from Luko again. We searched desperately for her, but the ARC's database eventually listed her as... deceased, because her signal totally vanished. That's a load of garbage. She set a trap at that mansion in a bid to kill us. <sighs> You're wrong. There's gotta be some reason why she called us there and just vanished. <laughs> Lie to yourself all you want. Investing in false hope will only lead you to ruin. I know, it's just... <sighs> Luca was so kind. All she wanted was to take care of people. I refuse to believe she would try to hurt us like that. Besides, even among cats, she's one seriously sturdy gal. I'm positive she's alive. I refuse to give up hope. When she's back, I'll be the first to welcome her home with open arms. Yo! Fancy meeting you here! We're training for naval combat! A Photon or Armada could attack at any time, so we're checking our formations and training daily to stay at the ready. Huey and I give orders to an entire fleet of battleships now! Pretty cool, right? Communication between battleships is essential for naval combat, and we're here to facilitate that. I'm the Combat Bureau Commander, and Claris Craze is my lieutenant. We've taken charge of the fleet. As you should, Huey and I are perfectly in sync. When it comes to combat tactics, we've got things locked down. Kosra's cooking up a strategy for us. He said we wouldn't last five minutes if we formed our own strategies, so he told us to shut up and do as he said. <laughs> Kosra's a nervous wreck. But I gotta say, his strategies are airtight. Our duties are mostly limited to Oracle fleet reinforcements and AIS transport. That means you, Boneheads, are in the vanguard! I know you won't let us down out there! Just discussing the handling of the enhanced AIS units. With the two of them being informants, I thought they might get a lot of feedback from people all over ARCS. Now then, I'd like to hear your subjective opinions on the matter. See, Ludmilla? You coming to us for intel shows me that you're a researcher with quite the head on her shoulders. Well, we do have experience piloting AIS, so we're happy to help. Plus, we're used to interviewing others in our line of work, so it should be fun being on the other end of the mic for once. Actually, I'm the only one getting actual stories, Patty. You need to suck it up and learn how to do it yourself. Ask away, Ludmilla. I'll answer whatever you throw at me. Why don't you ever listen to me, silly? Okay, let's start with a general question. How do you feel about AIS mobility in space? Is there any physical discomfort? Well, it's like... Mm, 
I feel a lot more floaty in space than on the ground, but sometimes it's kind of like, oh, I guess. Okay. Um, do you feel any recoil when using the high boost function? First, there's like a swoosh. Then it sort of goes... I actually kind of like that feeling. I see. Uh, how about you, Tia? In space, sometimes not knowing which way is up or down feels somewhat odd. High boost puts a bit of pressure on the body, but it's nothing significant. I see. What about shot accuracy? When dealing with live ammo, there's a huge difference with air resistance. But we're using photon bullets, so it's not so... All right, cool. Anything else you want me to answer? Oh, I've taken enough data from you, Patty. Thanks for your input. Ah, yes. I'd also like to get some input from you, too. In a bit. Now, back to Tia. Don't lock me out! I want to be part of this, too! Long time no see, Sierra. Good to see you've got a handle on things around here. It's not all smooth sailing, I assure you. But hey, I'm so glad you're okay, Shell. I am. Thanks for holding down the fort. Shell. Wow, a personal visit from Oak. To what do I owe the honor? herself and she wasn't the only one everyone was worried sick about you for you to waltz in here and play it off so casually come on Xiao. you're absolutely right forgive me my friends and thank you for caring about me Sorry for all the trouble, guys. I got one useful thing out of it, though. I can connect to Kamis and track photoner activity now. Is this the makeup of the enemy forces? They had the element of surprise, which made them a threat. Not anymore, though. It's time to regroup and launch a counteroffensive. Sierra, can I count on you one last time? You bet! <laughs> Sounds like it's time for us to act! <sighs> Come on, Theo! Hey, I'm back. Sorry to put you through all this trouble. Thanks to all of you. My image is now visible through the Dracolite. Although my main body is on Emduskia. The mothership is still under occupation. The link I had with it is completely gone. And we have no way of re-establishing contact at this time. 
The mothership is currently surrounded by Shiva's squadron. All operations are at her command. Honestly, I feel as if my own home was invaded. To say I'm unnerved is putting it lightly. We still don't have any means of reclaiming it. But I can assure you, we'll find a way. And when that time comes, we'll need all the help we can get from you. I'm counting on you. Yes, thank you. In fact, I'm doing much better now that I'm not lugging Xiao around. Hmm? Oh, I'm gonna be staying on Amduskia for a while. What? Xiao's main body is on Amduskia, and I've got a connection to him. So I guess you could call me his resident bodyguard. Will you be okay by yourself? Won't you get lonely? Boy, I wish I was by myself. Hey, Sarah! Are you ready yet, or what? Whoa! Hey! It's you and my predecessor! Are you going with her, Clarice Craze? Darn right! I didn't want Sarah to be all alone, so I volunteered! I wasn't going to be alone, silly. It's a key area, so one of the six was going with me regardless. In fact, I dare say that bringing her might actually be inviting more trouble. But I suppose I can see the logic behind it. Oh, Certainly! Nice. You're even smaller than me, so don't give me that attitude! What are you talking about? You're the smallest! Anyone with even one eye can clearly see I'm the bigger one here! Stay out of this, Sarah! Oh, it's you! If you want Sarah, she's on patrol right now. Anyway, talk some sense into her! here. Oh, we're not getting anywhere. Hey, Bonehead, what do you think? Oh, yeah. Well, that's not what I was really asking. But I suppose I'm partly to blame. Small. Oh, really? Yep, you bet. What kind of benefits are there? What kind? Uh, well, for starters, a nimble frame means mobility in battle. Smaller people are less likely to run into obstacles or get hit by enemy attacks. They can quickly adapt, attacking with precision, confidence, and dexterity. We're the total package! Ha-ha! <laughs> so you noticed. But dealing with something that easy was mere child's play for someone as awesome as me. 
Just two donuts will fill you up! But since you get full right away, you can't really pig out, so there's that. That's so sad. But when you're small, sometimes people give you candy! Yes! You two, there's signs of activity from the Photoner fleet. Could you come to the bridge, please? But I'm close enough. Xiao's back, and I can hardly just sleep through everything. Here's the predicted deployment of enemy forces. Looks like they're going to teleport into the city area for a direct boarding op. The way my photon senses are tingling, it's probably just for recon. I'd be shivering non-stop if this was a full-on assault. But if we know they're coming, we can plan for it. I'm sure they've thought this through. But we should be able to at least throw them off a little if we intercept them when they arrive. Basically, whoever hits first hits hardest. And that is where you two come in. Yes, we'll do our best together. Great. I'm counting on you both.
the advanced team has been wiped out. They appear to be predicting our moves quite accurately. I wonder how things are on the other end. to fight myself. You sure that's all you've got? What a king. <laughs> it's no use. My cover's blown. I'm copying them with laser precision. Why isn't it working? If they can calculate on the same level as the Akashic Records, that would explain why they can see through disguises. This is a wondrous advancement in my eyes. One worthy of a being that we Photoners gave rise to. Ark's mobile weapons incoming. They likely tracked our location from our teleport coordinates. <laughs> Is this their idea of comeuppance?
Even the advanced AIS models crumpled like tinfoil before her. This is getting ridiculous. The photonic mass stored in her body is, quite frankly, ludicrous. Photon attacks don't even touch her. And her body's been enhanced to the point where physical strikes may as well be friendly handshakes. She's a formidable foe, all right. Hypothetical calculations complete. Our assumptions were way off. I just derived Shiva's theoretical max output from the last engagement's measurements. Here it is. Holy moly! Look at those numbers! Are you sure you didn't misplace a decimal somewhere? This would mean she's as powerful as all of ARCs combined! That's nuts! Nuts? Maybe. But true. Her powers make more sense when you consider that she alone houses the collective photonic abilities of all photoners. When she showed up on the ARC ship before, from the way she was acting, there's zero question that she was just amusing herself. But not even we could lift a finger against her back then. She either absorbs or deflects anything but the most intensely focused photon attacks. You'd need an equivalent amount of photons to do so much as stand your ground in a fight against her. Yes. I think you're looking at this from the right angle. A way to suppress photons? Oh, that's right! I remember! Yes, Matoy. The sealing circle that Sukunahime used to bind your power when you were altered by the profound darkness. That was originally a field designed to seal Magatsu's power. If we could repurpose it for sealing Shiva's power, that is, her photons, then we might just stand a chance. Yes, we can do this! I just know Sukunahime will be glad to help us! Come on! Let's go pay Sukunahime a visit on Harukatan! Our fashionably late guests of honor arrive at last. Shiva? What are you doing on Harukotan? I was tired of playing tag, so I decided to head the game off. I figured you would show up eventually, but I wasn't expecting you to meander the whole way here. Oh, I'm fairly certain I disposed of all the trash in my sight. Why? There. You see? You pay for this! <laughs> that wasn't very nice. You assail my senses like flies swarming about garbage. Perhaps it's time I disposed of you. You two! Enemy forces are still amassing! Get out of there! Quick! And 
not letting you go. What's this? Sukuna Hime? <clears throat> I take it you must be this planet's guardian. I've no idea where you were hiding before, but I suppose this means you'll be my next opponent. Hmm. Buzzing away, are you, flies? Well, well. I imagine I'll be in for a lecture from Varuna upon my return. You're in the spirit realm, the place that lies between the corporeal realm and the netherworld. Sakunahime, you're safe! But the other daybreakers... Hmm. Assuming the worst as usual, I see. Take a look around, Matoy. Oh, Kotoshiro? <laughs> Yeah. Nice to see you two again. And I'm not alone. The other Daybreakers are right over there, too. It makes for a suitable evacuation shelter. A special place it may be to me, but necessity cares not for sentiment. Lady Sukunahime immediately sensed the arrival of those foul villains and whisked us all to safety here in the spirit realm. Would that I could have gotten everyone. But while I am many things, omnipotent is not one of them. Our losses were numerous. Of course, I imagine we're a good sight better off than the Nightfallers. <laughs> this is all because we were so late in coming. Not so. Even had you beaten them here, the outcome would by and large be the same. Hmm. You see how powerful that ruffian is. Hers is a power that exceeds yours. And likely, even mine. And so, I ask of you, enlighten me. Who are they? Interesting. The ones who created arcs. Hmm. We have quite the extraordinary guests on our hands. Sho said that the source of Shiva's extraordinary power lies in her nigh infinite photonic ability. If we could suppress that using your power, the sealing circle, then we might stand a chance of beating her. That it was that child's idea explains much. T'was a similar method that bound your power when you flew into a rage, Matoy. The similarities between the power I possess and the photons you use might make it possible. So be it. May I ask something unreasonable of you, then? Do anything in our power to help! 
<laughs> the very words I was hoping to hear. I have separate orders for you. 